So anyway, this is the last part already. And you know, we have kind of gone uh, six parts. Oh, sorry, this should be highlighted, part seven. Now, if you want a quick summary, uh, last week we, we did a quick summary, so I'm not going to do that again, okay? But we want to kind of uh, sum up together. Because one of the things about the house and marketplace is really the tension. It's really the differences. We, we are all very different, right? You look around you, look, look behind you. Very different, right? And, and actually, sometimes I look at all of you, you, you all have your favorite seat, right? <laughs> favorite corner, right? So I imagine if I'm sitting down, hmm, probably... Yeah, I'll probably sit at, at, at where Colin is sitting. That, that will be probably my, my seat. Okay, so, so it's okay. We have our preference. We have our... Uh, just what we want to do. But then when we come together, there is that balance. There is that working together. Okay? So this is the last portion already. And I, I think the whole mindset for, for this teaching is really this should be a starting point and not ending point. Now, this is one of the more interesting topics I've done because... Really, there's nothing like this out there. There's no reference. Actually, by the way, most of the time, I, I, I don't go and read books and, and copy and do a teaching. It, it doesn't work like that. But there is no reference, but God wants us to process. Everyone say process. We, we kept talking about process, right? But process is very personal. And how you process it, and some of us are, are more governmental, some of us are, are more house, some of us are more into particular seven mountains. It's okay. We have our preferences and things like that. But we have to find a way to process. Now, this is what Peter Wagner talked about when we want to explore new wine skin, we want to explore new streams. And this is what he said in, in, in his memoir. He said, evidently, no stream was meant to be the last. I have learned to be on the watch for signs of the next. So every time we think we're at the forefront of the newest wine skin, God does something new. And we don't want to miss that, right? So that's why as we conclude this series, uh, I really want to encourage everyone, pay attention to, to what is happening in the kingdom. And we, we know already this is a season of separation. God is trying to shake the church first. God is trying to stir us up first. But I want to just give a warning that this separation will not last forever. There will be a cut-off time. You know, there's always, uh, you know, whenever government wants to do a new policy, they will say, cut-off, right? 31st of March or whatever, whatever. And then, of course, in, in Malaysia, people always expect extension, right? People always expect... Uh, now, by the way, in, in the Bible, sometimes God extends the deadline. Do you know that? But not all the time. So we just have to be very careful about that. But this last part, we really want to focus on how we can work together. So I want to talk about four things together. And, and really, the whole idea is the whole is greater than some. Now, if you are... If you study courses on system, on programming, engineering, you know that this is a, this is a modern management term, right? The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So we want to talk about energy, we want to talk about decentralization because it's important to know prophetically where we are. Especially with, with COVID, with, with lockdown, suddenly the body of Christ became decentralized and, and people don't even need to come to meetings and, and things like that. There's the good things and the bad things, but I believe God brings us to that place then we have to talk about what is our goal because sometimes it's so, I find it so interesting that you can talk to believers, you can talk to people within the ecclesia and they don't quite agree what is the objective of the ecclesia. Of course, we go back to the Word of God, right? And then finally, we want to talk about how the hybrid is, um, is part of the whole picture. All right, so let's talk about synergy first, right? See, when you have the right talent, right? You have the right gift, and we talk about, I mean, Olympic just over, right? And sometimes you can see, especially team sports, right? You, you, may, have the, you may have the greatest talent, but if you don't have enough uh, time to, to mesh together, to have practice, you, you cannot perform, right? So, so I, I mean, I, I hardly watch Olympic. The only, the only portion I watch maybe men's basketball final, the, the last five minutes, okay? And, but you know, if you know men's basketball, of course, U.S. has won their fifth straight goal, but six tournaments ago, they lost. Because they just put a whole bunch of talent, undoubtedly the greatest talent. You, you know, you have, you have Tim Duncan, Island Everson. These are top players, but they, don't, they didn't have time to practice together and they're not familiar. By the way, do you know that the, the rules of Olympic are different from NBA? Very different. If you play basketball, you know. And the referees are different. But anyway, the whole thing about synergy is when you put certain things together, 
the right ratio, the right recipe, something special is created. So it applies to different things right? like food, right? Sometimes it's so interesting. You just need to add a little bit of salt and the food is much better, right? But too much is out, okay? So constructions, I, I know you build your house or things like that. And, and this is what Jesus said, right? I will oil cost the ecclesia, right? I will build the ecclesia. Jesus himself declared that. And the, the thing about this building of us is, is based on Jesus' personal desire. It's based on his choice. It's based on his specification. So that's why at the end of the day, our understanding of spiritual gifts are very, very important. You, I, I think I talked about it last part six or part five, I can't remember. It, it's not like I want this eagerly desire all spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 14, one, yes, but there are certain things not for you. And if you know it's not for you, what do you do? Accept it, exactly, exactly. You, you accept what is your portion and then you will see how the anointing manifests. Because if you kept, <coughs> excuse me, if you kept wanting somebody else give, then you will be forever wanting somebody else give, okay? So that's why when we talk about synergy, and this is the term I say, the whole is greater than the sum of all its parts. It's like one plus one is not two. It's more than that. And, and so this is really, we call synergy, but it's different from what we see today, artificial diversity. You know, diversity is such a, um, I mean, I don't really want to get into the teaching of diversity, but the way they promote it is really, and in Malaysia, we kind of understand it is because certain people are in certain position because of your background, because of your race, because of your religion, and that is the way modern diversity is working. But synergy is not like that. Synergy is if you are good with a particular area, I use you. You are engineer, I put you in the engine room. You don't put an accountant in the engine room. That's probably what caused Titanic to sink. You know, this kind of thing. So, so that's why you have to put the right... Actually, it's correct. You know, when, when they talk about Titanic and, and they were like cutting here, cutting here, cutting here because it's too expensive. So eventually, can't even survive, um, can't even survive an ice block, okay? So anyway, the whole concept of synergy is rooted in everyone is doing what he or she has been created to do. That's true understanding of spiritual things. And then we begin to see manifestation of all things. Now, you know this verse very, very well, Romans 8, 28. And unfortunately, this verse has been misused. <laughs> you see, as we know that God causes all things to work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Now, let me ask you, when is this verse always used? Yeah, when it's very charm already, right? Very charm already. He's like dying already. Okay, okay. Let, let me quote something. Let me quote something. And, and sometimes you, you talk to famous people. I, I remember when I was very young, tennis player. If, if you watch tennis in the 90s, Michael Chang, how many of you know Michael Chang? He was a Christian. And, and he will always quote this verse. And, and David Robinson, NBA player, also a Christian. Because it is a very generic, it's a very nice feeling. And it's like, okay, like if I lose, I still quote this one. Or if I win, I also... It's like a non-committal kind of thing, right? And, and that's why they will use it. A lot of believers will use this as comfort. Times of trial, confusion, there's adversity. But you see, this scripture actually has a different meaning. It's talking about the ultimate performance. We have destinies, right? And, and that's why according to God's purpose... And these destinies are ordained by God. You have to go back one verse. In verse 27, it talks about how Jesus intercedes, right? So a lot of people say, oh, you know, Jesus prayed for me. You know that? But actually, He only prays for us according to the will of God. If we are outside the will of God, He is not praying for you. And I think that comes as a shock to a lot of people. So that's why in the end, there is this purpose. It is possible for us to accomplish our destinies, but we have to decide. There is that cooperation part. We have to decide. We will work with heaven. We will work with the Spirit of God that Jesus has left behind, right? Remember Jesus said, uh, it is better for me to leave so that the helper can come. So we have to work with the helper. All right. So, so this, is, um, this is the whole idea about synergy. Now, now this is a, a funnel. In fact, one of the first pictures I ever saw when I was activated it is a funnel kind of thing because the Lord kind of very early on already kind of, uh, kind of I received the revelation that I'm the kind of person that will help people to find their spiritual gifts. And one of the ways to do it is the funnel. So there are many, many funnels. Of course, this one, especially in the context of this one, 
we look at the ingredient, right? We have seven mountain. Actually, it's marketplace. Uh. Marketplace is too long. That's why we use seven mountain. Otherwise, the word kind of jumble up. But you have these two together, but you must have house and marketplace. Only then you can hi have hybrid, right? If you just have one, if we just focus on house, or if we just focus on marketplace, there is no hybrid. And, and that's why in the end, you find this edge. You have this ability to disciple nations. So this is really a prophetic picture of what we call kingdom synergy. Now, the thing about, I know we kept talking about ratio and for you to find, but actually, you know, at the end of the day, the ratio is not so important. Why? Because it is God. Everyone say, it is God. It is God. There is a creative power. You know, God is creative. And that's why every time we have deficiency and we look at our government, it's like, oh, bad news, bad news, bad news. But there is the creative power of God that allows us to exercise judgment call. You see, this is very, very difficult for, for, for some to understand, especially if we come from a very Greek mindset, if we come from a very Confucius mindset, we want everything to be formula, formula, formula. I want exact ratio to three or four decibel. You know, some people will be like that. But it doesn't work like that. There is that creativity the Spirit causes us to decide. So when you are... And that's why, you know, theologians and missionary always have conflict. Uh, and I, I want to encourage you to read Peter Wagner's memoir because he is a missionary, right? And he works in Fuller, School of World Missions, and then there's a school of theology. They always have conflict because theologians have theory, but no practical. How many of you have met people with a lot of management theory? Then you ask them, oh, so you ever worked before? Oh, you mean coming out with theory is not work, is it? Yes, it's not really work. It's not practical work, right? So, so that's, that's the thing. You, at the end of the day, you have those who can teach, those who can teach theory and things like that. But it has to be tested, right? It has to be, uh, you have to go into the, the, the marketplace and test it. So that's why at the end of the day, what God desires to produce with all these things, the, the marketplace, the house, coming out with a hybrid, is that we get this discipling nation's edge that could counter. Because what is happening right now is we are seeing a very strong anti-Christ spirit all around the world. What, what does it do? It, it basically causes people, it, it basically causes the ecclesia not to be, not able to get the harvest. So all the things that we are seeing, the global movement and things like that, it is all meant to reduce the harvest. See, at the end of the day, devil already knew he lost. He knows already. He knows he's going to hell. But in that process, he's going to want to minimize harvest. He's going to want to cause nations to become good. So we have to have the right perspective. All right. Point number two, I want to talk about decentralization. And this is something that's been happening. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the natural natural things. I, I know some of you will be like, oh, I'm not interested in the world affair. I'm not interested in government stuff. I, let me tell you, you have to have some understanding. Look at your neighbor and say, some. I don't, I don't expect you to be like me, spend hours every day to, to read news and things like that. No. But you, you cannot be like, you know, kata under tempurong. You know, it's like, huh? Don't know, don't know, no. Every don't know. You cannot because we, we, are, we are in a pay decade. What you believe, what you understand will cause what you declare or not declare. You need to have some basic understanding. If you really have no basic understanding, talk to some of us, we will give you a refresher. Don't even know how to do it. Maybe, maybe like Ryan, David Tian, you can give her a 10-minute course. No, half an hour. I, I, I don't know, but... Okay, I, 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 give me one minute to, to explain, okay? So, you have to understand, all these things what we're seeing now is after World War II. We, we have more than 75 years of peace after World War II. It has never happened before in the entire history. Entire history of mankind is always fighting. There is always some fighting somewhere. But after World War II, we have seen this, and, and then it became even more prominent after the fall of Berlin War because finally the enemy is gone. The Cold War is over. But then what happened is that we move into a centralized global movement, very similar to Babel. Remember Babel? In Genesis. So, this is what we call a neoliberal idea. Neoliberal basically means post liberal. That means uh, another version, a, a mutation of liberal idea. And, and basically, this is what we are seeing right now. Sometimes we use a very general term. We say globalist. And, and you know, when we were young, right, we say, oh, globalization is a good thing, right? Right? I mean, we study in history, all oh, globalization is good. 
uh, travel will become shorter, everything. But when you look around, is the world a better place right now? I'm not going to answer for you, you have to answer yourself. But the thing about this neoliberal idea, okay, I'm just two minutes only, okay? So it's really, it's a fusion. Everyone said fusion. Because you look at all these philosophy, how can they be together? But they are together because the big brother mastermind is Lucifer himself. First, you have Marxism. Marxism, I think a lot of people don't understand Marxism. They think it is socialism. It is part of it. But the, the key to Marxism is I must remove God from people's life. First objective. Then you have welfare states. And a lot of welfare states today, unfortunately, are the former commonwealth. You look at United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, they are welfare states today. You don't work, government will feed you. Then you have social democrats, which basically is a very generic term to describe Europe. Do you know, I just read yesterday that German, German um, finance ministers say no more money for Ukraine because Germany's budget is 70 billion deficit. German's economy is crushing. You don't read that in mainstream media, but they are dying. They are really dying. And, and they rely on Russia pipe for energy. How, how stupid is that? But anyway, not, no, not commenting on that. Totalitarian will be like CCP and things like that. Philosopher King will be someone like Obama like that. They, they will come and say, well, let me tell you I'm smarter than you. So you see, all these things look very different, but they all come together because they have a similar objective, which is... We, we want people to stop thinking and just trust us. So some people like this because they don't want to think. So my challenge to you today in the month of Av, because the month of Av is really the month of thinking. The month of Av is about what do you really want? When they go and see the giants, the grapes, the fertile land, flowing milk, honey, all, all the good things, right? But then they chose to focus on the Nephilim. They chose to focus on we cannot beat them. And this was after what? After God already smacked Egypt, the greatest civilization in that region. It's like, what, what are the Nephilim compared to Egypt? Egypt is like greater, right? But, but that, that's how the emotion works. So that's why the whole thing is there is a collective leadership from that side that will want to tell you that we know what is best for you. So remember COVID time, remember lockdown time, everyone wants to say, oh, this is best for you. Oh, you should just take the best thing. It's the best, it's the best. Then after a while, now, now you can see that the, the belief is very, very shaken already, right? So that's why and I'm not against all these things. You see, United Nations, EU, WHO, Economic Forum, you, you have to be aware that that is their starting agenda. It doesn't mean you always go against them. It doesn't mean you cannot work for them. You could be like Daniel, you could be like Joseph, you could go in there. But you have to understand where is their starting point. Here's the thing. You see, when you do that, sovereignty of nations are taken away. That's why the whole idea about open border. But here's the thing. When you look at the Bible, it talks about the border being the security and identity of your nation. If you don't have this sovereignty, does that mean you cannot be ship nation anymore? Something to think about. I'm not saying yes or no, but this is something which is interesting, right? If you have no nation then how do you get the reward of nations? How do you get the reward of Psalms 2, which Jesus had a personal deal with the Father, right? Ask of me and I'll give you nations. Okay, so remember decentralization kind of forced upon the world, year of lockdown 2020, but then it became an opportunity for the ecclesia. Everyone says opportunity. So every time there's danger, there's opportunity, right? I mean, you, you, you see that the Chinese character word, you know, you do a word study, there is that. You, you have the danger, you have the risk, then you have the opportunity. Yeah, those of you who know. <laughs> those of you who know, who know, okay? So what are the opportunity? And, and when, I mean, think about it, 2020, it seems like so long ago, right? Seems like we are like struggling to come here and do our recording and things like that, right? And, but see, here's the first thing. It's time to elevate our self-starting edge. So all of a sudden, it's like, hey, you, you, are, you are at home, you cannot come to meeting. If you don't log in, if you don't go and watch, you don't go and learn, that's it, you're left behind. It, see, self-starting is a double-edged sword. You either advance or you regress. Because nobody is supervising you anymore. And, and that is a time, right? Lockdown time, we see some people really drop out, right? I mean, we're talking about every industry. They cannot keep out, they're out. Time to increase our capacity because all of a sudden, you're on your own for a season. 
See, that's why our, our Christian faith is really a balance. We, we, we have personal walk, but then when we are mature, we come together for the corporate expression. So that was a time, I think a lot of people start to learn new things, right? Okay, let's learn to do this. Let me write something. Let me do some cooking and things. Like that. I don't know how many of you still do your lockdown learning. Maybe for some, it becomes a business, right? For some people, they become rich because they learn new skill during that time. Then this is what uh, Apostle Chuck Pierce says. In dealing with the red dragon, all of a sudden, like Egypt, right, we have an opportunity to break away from Pharaoh-like structures. Now, of course, when you look at lockdown, it's very, very, very controlled, but at the same time, there's some opportunity, right? Some of the things they cannot control. So, so that, that's why, and, and remember during the lockdown time, we, we, we did exactly that operation, right? Operation Jail, right? That, that really dealt with Pharaoh-like structure. Because we know in Malaysia, we have a pharaoh, right? Maha Firuwan. If you don't know who that person is, talk to some of us. So, anyway, in the time of decentralization, here's the thing, we have to watch and align with the art of God. And that's the thing, after Israel left Sinai, the ark was leading them, right? And very, very soon after that, Korah rebellion, and, up, and uh, Miriam and Aaron, you know, all the things started to, you see, I, I believe when Israel took their eyes off the ark, they start to manifest. Then, of course, the man of Af on the second year, they came back from a, a Kaddish Barnea, and, and that's it, you, you, you know the whole story. So that's why we have to watch, not just watch, because sometimes you can see, oh, the move of God is great, but are you part of it? Are you part of it? If you're not part of it, then we, you could be like Israel. You can come back with a bad report. Where is the art? Where is the spirit of God going? This is a time and season to ask this question. All right, some more about this. Now, I already mentioned a very good book to, to read. is Passover Prophecy. In fact, we did uh, one event here. But, but it's very different. Every season is different. Now, of course, when we do teaching here, you come, it's a different kind of processing. Some of you can learn uh, more when you read yourself, but very often we find that the combination helps. You know, you read yourself and then you come and do corporate. Uh, then you start to see and hear things that you might have missed, okay? Because I don't know, what, you know, we all are different kind of reader, right? So, some people skip a lot, you know, when they read. Like, especially if the books are very thick, right? Actually, I have this habit also. I, 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 some of the part I'll, I'll, I'll skip and then I'll come back if it's interesting. Talking about novel. So here's a very interesting thing about the book and, and Chad recently talked about it. The book was written in the context of lockdown in 2020, of course, talking about the presidential election at the end of 2020, but it seems even more applicable now. See, that's how the prophetic words, sometimes you give a prophetic words from the human perspective, you think it's applicable now. But from God's perspective, he can stretch that prophetic word into the future. So this is what even Apostle Chuck Pierce felt is maybe even more important in this cycle. So that's why when we have decentralization and people are in different places, even more critical for us. We are the Ecclesia, right? We have to differentiate house versus marketplace. So one of the things I hope after seven sessions of this is you begin to think where you are more. And now, you don't need, uh, like I say, you don't need to be so precise in your compartmentalization, you know, because, you, you know, the Greek people, the Confucius people will be like, oh, I want to be very, very clear. Am I on the left or right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's that you have to process yourself and, and begin to come up. And even as I do seven parts, I, I, I'm still processing with God where, where I'm more at. And it's okay. Sometimes we can change. Now, here's the thing. The difference between house and marketplace has always been there since the beginning, even in the Bible. It's always there. There are people, there are the Levites and there are the non-Levites. It's always there. Since the beginning, God already has a very clear demarcation. But why we have this confusion, one of the reasons is because you study church history, the ecclesia in the last 1,500 years, we have been dominated by the house. Basically, you know, since Constantine, then with the Roman Catholic Church, even when Luther uh, did the restoration, it is still very local church, very centralized church control. So you, you have the clergy and you have the laity, you know, that, those kind of division. So, but at the end of the day, why you have this system is because the, the church was captured by a spirit that wants to control 
the believer. You see, why so many churches don't, don't do prophetic activation? Because it's like, oh, how can I allow the believer to prophesy? What if they hear from God and they start to do their own thing and don't want to come here anymore? That's precisely the point, right? You hear from God and hopefully you do the right thing. And that's the thing with other religion and all the things that's happening. I mean, we just did one episode, you know, uh, the podcast we talked about. Uh, last Monday, if you, if you are read the news, uh, Elon Musk interviewed Donald Trump, right? So before that, so many people say, oh, you better censor, you better censor. It's a bit like the religion in this land, right? They are afraid that if you see some Christian event, suddenly you will convert. It's like you think people are so stupid, right? And this is exactly the mindset of the church for 1,500 years. They don't want the saints to have a very self-starting and entrepreneurial spirit. And some of us are in traditional church and they will be like, oh, don't go to this conference, don't watch this person, uh, Benny Hing is a devil or whatever. You know, those kind of things. So, so it's just something to, to open our eyes. So, so that's why at the end, you know, for, for 1,500 years, everything is controlled by central leadership. They use the house, they use religion. And that is why by this time, after World War II, you start to see there is a very wide gap between house and marketplace. You see people who are very successful in marketplace, they don't want to come to church because they feel like you're also very religious, you're very traditional, you're very old, you're not efficient, things like that. So, so all, all these things. Then of course, but you see, even then, throughout history, you have seen outstanding marketplace people, right? You see, Wilberforce, you know Wilberforce? Gartenberg, printing press, he's a Christian. By the way, you know, some, some people say Gartenberg is the 10 or 20 most influential human of all time. Because he, he, he did printing press. And he allowed information. In fact, the first Bible was done by him, the Gartenberg Bible. Richard Leinhardt, recently I, I, I was reading some history on Islam and Christianity. Very, very interesting. Now, you know Richard Leinhardt, right? I mean, you, you all think about him. Maybe you see him in the movie, Robin Hood and things like that. Okay, that's all fake. Okay? But, but he, he was motivated by his faith and he wanted to defend Jerusalem. So in fact, after that he was, you know, he was captured by, uh, by, by, by the Muslim king and the country had to pay a ransom that nearly bankrupt England. Isaac Newton, you know he was a Christian. And because he was thinking about God and things like that, all of a sudden he, he found all the law. I mean, it's not like, you know, people say, oh, sit under the tree, sit under the tree, hit by the apple. No, he was thinking about the word of God. He was thinking about how the creation came about. So some of you may be like Isaac Newton, okay? So these people clearly had marketplace edge, right? They are not house people. They are marketplace people and they left their mark strongly. So even though there is a control system, you still get all these heroes come out once in a while. But what's happening right now is we need more people to go into marketplace. We need to encourage it in a wider scale. Because when you look at Seven Mountain, you can see that many, 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 many areas are really outside the influence of believers, outside the influence of Ecclesia. That's why in the end, we have to recognize if those people, if some of you have stronger edge, you have stronger anointing in the marketplace, then you should be released, you should be commissioned out. So how to do that and things like that, you know, I believe God will give us strategy, but the first thing before you even reach it is you have to think, you have to explore whether you are, where you are more at. Then it's easier to define and commission. Now, of course, just very quickly, I want to talk about the, the marketplace movement, why we are here, how, you know, even our wine scene, how is it possible? And it, it's really possible because of what? Because of the restoration of truth in the last 100 years. The most important one, I would say, is the prophetic move. Why? Now, before prophetic move, the most important move is the, uh, Martin Luther. Now, Martin Luther, of course, people say it's justification by faith, but you know that another very important thing that which he brought back was priesthood of all believers. Do you know that you, before Luther, you can't even pray to God? You have to find a priest. And suddenly Luther says, what priest? You can pray directly. Okay, so one-way communication established. You can pray. Oh, but unfortunately, you still can't hear. So you pray, you pray, you pray. Hopefully, God hears you and do something. Is there any confirmation? It's like, you know, if you know about submarine warfare, right? It's like, 
you know, with, with the sonar tech and things like that, they really learn from Dolphin, you know. They, they realize Dolphin release a sound. But when you release a sonar, what is your objective? Your objective is to hit an object, then it will bounce back. Then you can calculate and, and tabulate the distance. So it's like this, right? Can you imagine you keep praying and nothing? So that's why when the prophetic was restored, that's why Apostle Michel always say why the activation is so important. People need to have quick and immediate success in marketplace. And this is one of the way. Not the only way, but one of the way because all of a sudden you realize you have a sweet, you, you are able to hear for yourself. You see, all the saints are priests. We, 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 we should be able to engage with God, but then we are prophetic within our own sphere. You may not have the gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy means you can prophesy to other people, but you are definitely prophetic within your own sphere, right? Can you know God's will for your own life? You should. Now, it doesn't mean that you, you, you don't get prophecy. It doesn't mean you don't get redemptive prophecy, processing and things like that. But I would say the majority of revelation should come from your own personal work we got. I, I don't know, 60-70%. Then the last 20-30%, maybe you need someone to prophesy. And very often, those kind of words is more to confirm, to affirm, to encourage. So, of course, with all these things, then the God at Work movement began to take off and then we have teaching on Seven Mountain, the Saints Movement. I really re remember in the 90s, late 90s, when I was in Australia, Seven Mountains teaching started to come out. And, and you can see what the traditional church were like, so scared of that. It's like, what, what demonic teaching are you doing? Because they cannot comprehend Matthew 28. They cannot comprehend Genesis 1.28. You are supposed to multiply and subdue the whole earth. They are like, oh, then, then you want to be like the Taliban or whatever. Well... That is what God said, right? Subdue, but with the quality of heaven. So all these things prepared by God so that when this decentralization happened, people are ready to become self starters Because can you imagine no prophetic activation? Decentralization would be too tough, right? And, and one of the incidents, of course, a, a mega church pastor, you heard this story before. You know, mega church is basically creating people who are robot followers. So this famous guy, I don't want to mention his name, he had a scandal and things like that removed. And then one of his, um, one of his associate ministers wrote a book and the book is called Secondhand Jesus. Because he said, all this while, we never have interaction with Jesus. We only hear from the senior pastor who is becoming like our Jesus. Who, 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 scary. That's why you will never hear us say that, follow what we say, no. We, we, we say, look, we have some teaching, we have some advice, we have some exhortation, but it is for you to have a link with God and hear the voice of God for yourself. Very important. Okay, quickly, move on. Committed to the same goal. Now, this sounds like a no-brainer, right? It's like, okay, we're all going to the same place, but there are so many people within the ecclesia, they are not aware of the actual purpose. And, and this is one of the big challenge right now, especially in the Church of America, because they have many, many very traditional uh, churches. And also, I think some of you can really understand this because certain end-time understanding, right? You know, sometimes we talk to people, and what is the end-time understanding? Rapture. rapture, right? How many of you still believe in rapture? No, no, rapture will happen. But when? When? So, so the understanding is the world will get worse and worse and worse, and then at the worst point, God will take us into the heaven. Ah, relief. So that's why when they, when they look at what's happening around, oh, it's very good. God is coming already. You all better prepare your nuclear-proof bunker or whatever, if you can afford it. Otherwise, just, I don't know, some, some missile-proof is better than nothing. But here's the thing. When you look at the Bible, it's not consistent, right? Jesus is not coming for a damaged bride, right? Jesus is not coming, and we saw that He is coming for, for a glorious, uh, for glorious ecclesia. So that's why there is this challenge there. And, and very quickly, what is the objective of the ecclesia? You know this already, but you, you have to start from Matthew 16. You, you know, we, we have to receive the keys of the kingdom of God. By the way, do you know that it's not automatic? A lot of people look at Matthew 16, and oh, keys of kingdom, we have it. No, if you don't do the right thing, you don't get it. You don't receive it. There is a process. That's why there is Judah. That's why, you see, part of the, the reason why we steward Judah 
It is we want to be able to receive the keys. Now, you see, we, we, are, we are a house that is hybrid, house and marketplace. That's why we cannot be like some of the house that can focus on Judah all the time. You know, some house will, will have like well, almost 24-7 worship, right? So if I ask you all to do 24-7, is it doable? It's not a trick question. It's not doable. Because we are not a house-only entity. Understand that? So don't, don't feel bad if you can't do it. And this is the mindset we need to challenge ourselves. We need to know what we're supposed to do. We cannot say, oh, this is what GOZ do. We want that. We can't. They are a house-only entity different from us. So, so that's why know our place. This is part of the objective of this series. Then, of course, once you have this key, what can you do? You have the authority, right, to allow and forbid. And this is the thing that is happening right now. Every day we read news, right? Even in Malaysia, right? Every day is bad news, right? <laughs> Most days have mostly bad news, okay? So there's some good news. So, but, but how do we begin? There is this authority there. Now, of course, you'll be like, oh, I don't know the government. I'm not in government. It's okay. You see, God can cause us to start from somewhere. Whether it's just a conversation with a neighbor, whether it's do prayer walk, whether it's do a spiritual warfare assignment, whether it's intercession, whether it's nation watch, whatever, you do your part. Look at your neighbor and say, you do your part. Do your part. That's why um, I, I, I think after Elu, once the new year comes, we're going to have some spiritual warfare assignment. I really hope if you're a regular of this house, you will participate in this because all the training all the teaching that you receive over the months and years are actually preparing you. Now, of course, you still have your marketplace obligation. I, I, I understand that. I get that. I get that you need to earn money and things like that. No problem. But I'm just saying that you have the keys of the kingdom. You have learned how to allow and forbid. You should use it. Then, of course, go back to Genesis 1 and 8. Multiply and subdue the earth. Actually, Islam understood this better. And we, we saw the top leaders of past talking about this, you know. They, re, they reference this verse, you know. And, and they, they mention Adam is the one who did it. See, why you do that? At the end is you want nations to choose to be sheep and goats so that some soul can be accomplished. Ask of me and I will give you nations. That, that's the deal between Jesus and the Father. The purpose of mankind was to rule and reign with Christ. Do you know that? In, in, in Ezekiel and also Revelation, towards the end, and there are nations that come to, to the, the new heavens for leaves or healing. And, and some people will be like, huh? There's still another set of mankind? Yeah, actually, you know, that's why some people say, oh, you know, you don't like to sing, you don't, don't like to worship, you know we are going to sing and worship all the time. It's not true. You are, re, you are ruling and reigning also. Ruling and reigning is not singing and dancing all the time. Right? I mean, you have celebration. You see, we, we need a complete picture of the Word of God. So there is that. I mean, I don't know you. I mean, I, I, I like worship, but I think I, I like rule and reign more. Because that's our DNA. We have been created as such. But who are the nations that we can rule? It's a mystery. So one day we will know. Okay, very quickly, I want to talk about why we have this disconnection. Why people will be like, oh... You, oh, you know, I, I hear your teaching. I, I cannot agree. But you see, every time we do our teaching, it's all biblical, right? We, we hardly go outside the Bible. And you go, oh, we cannot agree. But why are some of the reasons? I want to just quickly go through and then I want to move to the last point. You see, the first thing is there's a lack of awareness of the restoration of truth. Acts 3, 21, you know, right? Jesus must be retained in heaven until the restoration of all things. Peter's second sermon. So we don't know that God is progressively restoring things that have been lost. So that's why church history, uh, prophetic activation is very important. And every time we have this kind of training, you, you should try to invite people because we are not going to do it more and more. In fact, in future, we might not even do it once a year because we are moving into a different dimension of reading. Now, of course, the other thing is captured by religious spirit. Early days, we have this experience. People, um, you know, they are, they are very loyal to their denomination and things like that. That is the reason why some of you you may need a season of the studying of the Word of God. Now, a lot of people can, can study God's Word by themselves, but a lot of people require the activation. That means come together and study. Yeah. So, I remember when I was in university, I, I, I know the Bible very well, but I wasn't activated properly. So, I have had knowledge, but I, I didn't realize the Word 
could help me, could give me revelation. So I, I, I committed to that, that kind of activation for a few years and then it became part of me. Then, then, it's, then you become a self-starter. So all I'm trying to say is that for some of us, maybe you just need to commit to a season of receiving the Word of God. How you do it, I, I, I think you, you can discuss with God, okay? Then of course, the other thing, overwhelmed by Red Dragon, and this is the thing that some, some of us have been talking a lot, is really there is an atmosphere war. Remember um, the year 2020, right? It's 5781, right? 5781 is the year of Red Dragon, right? Red Dragon and Lion of Judah. So the whole COVID episode is, is, a, is a, like a case study like that. So see, at the end of the day, what is the primary emotion? Fear. When people are fearful, then then they don't even... See, this is a politically correct spirit. When you are fearful, when you are afraid to offend people, you say things you don't even believe. That is the worst. Then, of course, this is very straightforward. Unbelief against God's word. Genesis 128 and Discipline of Nation, they just don't believe it. See, this is when you, when you discuss with people. I don't use the word argue because it's a discussion, right? At the end of the day, if you really want to put it to them, well, that means certain parts of the Bible you don't agree, right? And they'll say, oh, no, 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 I believe, but our interpretations are different. But it's okay. But these, these are all, all the things. And finally, of course, not aligned with Holy Spirit and the art of God. We saw that, that's not what I mentioned already. Even Israel, right after they left Sinai, immediately their eyes are off the ark. And, and that's why you see what happened to them. So, discipline of nations, not easy. Look at your neighbor and say, not easy. Ah, very, very difficult, right? Um, so, so, in fact, when you look at the Bible, Acts 19 is the only example of a region that has been transformed. Of course, we have case study and, and, and things like that. Binding the strongman of America, uh, uh, Oklahoma State example, 20, it, it's a good example, but it's just a small portion, right? And now, the thing about us is that we, we as a believer, our greatest strength is still in the spiritual realm, right? We, we still affect the spiritual realm more, but then here's the thing, why we want people to begin to have understanding and processing of natural is what happens in the spirit flows through the natural. So at the very least, you need to be able to see whether what you're doing in the spiritual helps the natural. So if you can't even process the natural, how do you know you're successful? Right? So when we do all the prayer work, how many prayer work we have done already? The, the major one, five or six, right? So every time we have to look, is there a change? Has the news changed? Has the atmosphere changed? Is there change in government and, and things like that? Even though that is not our objective, our objective is to bring the presence of God here. So that's why we need some natural understanding. Here's the other thing I want to finish with this part before we go to the last point. We have to differentiate believer, people like Daniel, Nehemiah, versus the kings, Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar. Cyrus and Nebuchadnezzar will help the people of God, but they are not the ecclesia. And this is the point that has been talking. You know, people talk about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not the ecclesia, but he is a king that will help. So that's why Apostle Paul himself said, right, I'm first called to the Jews, then the Gentiles. You know what is the third category? The kings. That's why towards the end, he was like so obsessed, I need to go to Rome. Whether as a free man or as a slave or as a prisoner, it doesn't matter. If I can talk to Caesar, maybe I can move the heart of the king. See? Three categories. So that's why at the end of the day, we, we, you see, I think sometimes the church thing, we had to be like Nebuchadnezzar, we had to be like Donald Trump. But what if we have a Malay Cyrus, you know, some of us prophesied before. That is not going to be part of Ecclesia, but then we want to be in strong position to influence them. That's our job. So that's why we have, you see, more and more we need to be clearer about what we're supposed to do and not to do. Now, of course, you can be king. You can be at the top of seven mountain. You can. But I'm just saying that for the ecclesia, our, our, our really main role is to influence kings. And some of us, like Joseph became king, Nehemiah became governor of Jerusalem, fine. David was a king of a great nation for a season, fine. But for most cases, we are mostly there to influence the Cyruses, the Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, last, last part already, let the hybrids arise, okay? And, and we already kind of talked about hybrid equipping in part four. I'm not going to talk about that. Basically, if you miss part four, part four is more talking about, you know, we say, can the equipping, can the training be done in the marketplace? And we say, yeah, it's possible. But remember our sushi analogy, right? We say, we say Judah is like tuna, right? You, you, 
I just cannot imagine how you can do it in marketplace, but maybe one day you can. Maybe you have a very over arts, arts and entertainment arm. I mean, you do have, right? You do have Christian band and things like that, they're very overt, but there's a limitation to that overtness, right? Do you find that? They'll be like, oh, praise Jesus, or whatever. Okay, after a while, it's like, you know, they, they can't do like spiritual warfare, tear down the wall and things like that. They can't. It, it's like not politically correct. So I, I don't know, maybe they will be, we, we are always, we're always open to new things, right? See, as we have look at different parts of church history, right? See, every time we enter into a new move, you know, you know pendulum, right? When you go into a new move, pendulum always go extreme. If you do physics tests, right, it will go left, go right, go left. Eventually, it will settle, right? Now, if you want a, a clearer understanding on this, um, Bishop Bill Hammond ha has a very good book on, on church history, like the complete one. If you're really a his history buff, lah, then you can read those. Like, it's, like, I don't know, 600 pages or whatever. But it, it will really help you to see, oh, every move is very chaotic. You know, every move is very chaotic. When the Pentecostal came, they would be like, if you don't speak in time, you are a devil, you know. It's like, so extreme, right? Then, if you sit there, if God doesn't, if the Spirit of God doesn't fall, we don't leave. That's why Pentecostal meeting in the early days is three, four, five, six hours. And after a while, people are like, oh, I need to work, you know. <laughs> then, of course, the charismatic came and said, oh, no, you can activate, lay your hands. Where's the scripture? First Timothy, you know. So, you, you, you find scripture to to uh, add to the understanding. So every new movement, they will string to extremes, right? Then eventually, they will reach a balance. How you reach a balance is proper teaching and then practical experimentation. That's why I mentioned, you have theologian. So look at Martin Luther. Martin Luther is a practitioner, right? He, he began to do the, the Reformation. But how did he get the theology? The theology came from Calvin. John Calvin said justification by faith. So Calvin was a theologian and... Luther was a practical minister. So you look at the apostolic prophetic movement, Bishop Bill Hammond, look at himself and Peter Wagner are similar. Peter Wagner is a theologian and Bishop Bill Hammond is the activator minister. This is just some example. So you need to do that because let's say, oh, we have a teaching on prophetic evangelism, healing and things like that. Go and do it. Then you go and do it. Ah. How, come he, how come pray one time, no healing? Pray second time, no healing. Then come back. It, not then you begin to think, what is the spirit of infirmity? Is it natural? Is it spiritual? Don't be too spiritual. Don't be, don't be too natural. You know, those kind of things. You need to do it. Only then you can process it. Just attending a course will not help you. So that's why eventually, everyone say eventually. eventually. You read. So, so, I mean, healing, I, I always like to use healing. I, I, I don't have a gift for healing. But healing is a very interesting thing because those of you with a gift, your, your, your faith is unreasonable. <laughs> it's okay. That, that's your gift. But then you have people who are like, maybe they are, they are in the medical field or, or they're, you know, then, then they'll be like, okay, okay, when do we stop? I mean, you always have this thing, right? Someone died already, you want to pray for, for resurrection, right? When do you stop? It's not an easy question. But, but it happens to us a few times. Like eventually, you, you all figure it out, right? Eventually, you all stop, right? So, so that's the thing. Eventually, a balance is reached. So that's why, for this point, this is the last point before I move to the last point. See, we talk about the house dominated for 1,500 years, right? So now suddenly we shift into marketplace. There is a temptation. Everyone said temptation. temptation. Especially we are all in marketplace. We have, there is a temptation for us to think that marketplace is superior. I'm sure you have thought of that. Okay? Don't tell me you have not thought of that. But I'm just saying that, look, find the pendulum. And as I do this, I, I begin to see that some of us here, um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a majority, but I think some of us will be called more to the house. It, it's like you're there to support, you're there to equip and things like that. And others will be like full on outside. It's okay. That's why this part is all about working together. Okay, let's come back to this again. And see, this is a final prophetic picture, right? See, how do you get that hybrid, you, you need both, right? You need the house. You need the marketplace. Because if you don't have both, how do you know what is hybrid? You know, the whole definition of hybrid, I mean, we understand hybrid, of course, from motor vehicle, right? So hybrid is what? Hybrid means can run on battery and also 
Petrol, right? Uh, of course, they, they do it together, but now you know like Toyota, for example, releases true hybrid. True hybrid meaning what? You can actually turn off the electric portion. Without the battery, your petrol can run. So basically, two systems. Because actually what happened is they, they really don't have much faith in full electric. So what if one day the battery is not working? I, I need to have a backup plan. So the calculator, ah, yeah, the engine is the same. I just need a different interface. Just put in. Ah. So some of the newer car from, from Toyota now is true hybrid. But I, I don't know if it's practical or not. So you want to have hybrid. You need to have both, right? You need to have experience in the house. You need to have experience in the marketplace. Then you can say, I am hybrid, right? See, only when we embrace both, only when we experience both, we can produce a new category. That's why it's down there, the new category. And, and you see, how to reach there, that's why I mentioned earlier on, I want to mention again, it's really, we have to have the right understanding, not just understanding, commitment. Everyone say commitment. commitment. To spiritual gifts, truth. What is the truth? You have it, you have it. You don't have it, you don't have it. That is the absolute truth. Even though First Corinthians 14 says eagerly desire. I, I don't care about that because if you don't have it, you don't have it. Yeah. Try lah, try. You say you have, try. I always say try. If you like, like hit the wall, hit the wall, hit the wall, after five years, you have to maybe consider that you don't have the gift. It's not easy. It's not easy because people are drawn to their spiritual heroes. People, uh, so, so that's why the, the whole thing about confirmation of gift you look at the actual gift, you look at the prophetic words, you look at your personal feeling, you look at what other people say about you, you have to kind of process it all together. And it can change because you may have gift in one season and then God kind of bring you into a, a, the process of um, convergence and all of a sudden your, your major tree change. It's possible, right? Is it possible? How many of you can you think 10 years ago do you do the same thing as now? Some of you, maybe yes. Some, some people, you know, Jeremiah was called to be a prophet since birth and he never changed from there. But you look at Apostle Paul, right? Uh, start with religion mountain and towards the end, he become hybrid, right? And then he wants to be a hybrid that is able to... Can you imagine if you are a synagogue trained rabbi and you want to go see Caesar? Caesar is a who the heck? It's uh, Israel, I, I thought that's like some slum that we have conquered. Why some rabbi from the slum want to talk to me? Nope. But if you are, if you are like, oh, I'm a contractor, I'm a high-level contractor, I'm a tent maker, I have association with the House of Purple Cloth in Philippi. It's like, like a, a bit more credential, right? I mean, sometimes you want to meet people, like, who, who is this person? Oh, this person it used to be a personal assistant to Barack Obama and things like that. Oh, okay. I, I can see him. <laughs> you, you know, you, it, connection works, right? Yeah. So that's why, in, in the end, why you go into hybrid? It, why Paul go into hybrid is because I really believe towards the end, he wanted to see Caesar. Very, very desperately. Anyway, what's the unique qualities of hybrid? I'm going to finish off with this already. What's the... What is the quality? The first quality is flexibility. We are very flexible, right? Because true hybrid can really navigate between house and marketplace seamlessly. That's why all of you have marketplace job, right? I hope. Um, so sometimes you can do that, but, but you see, what, what we're trying to say is that yes, you, you have a stronger edge. Um, you, you are able, but sometimes if you say, oh, you need to go to marketplace, you need to go to a meeting, you need to do a, go to a business meeting. Most of you will not have a problem to go to a business meeting, right? Imagine a full-time pastor trained in synagogue, never done, never look at the account their entire life, suddenly go to a business meeting. And we're seeing sometimes we do transaction, buy property, and the pastor is there, like, really don't know what's happening. Talk to my accountant. So, flexibility. Everyone say flexibility. flexibility. We can move. Second thing is credibility. Because you, you see, the house and marketplace have different credibility, right? In the house, faith, right? Oh, I have great faith. I believe Something will happen and then it happened. Testimony, you know, every time you come testimony, so people who give, come and give testimony and the goodness of God happen in their life, you have credibility, right? But you go to a marketplace and say, you know, I pray and God answer me. And people will be like, <laughs> no comment. What is credibility in marketplace? It's success. It's your track record. It's like, oh, I bring in 10 million business last quarter. Ooh, ooh let's talk, let's talk. They don't care about your faith. Credibility. 
Third one, join equipping. You see, why we want hybrid is so that our training is not too spiritual or natural. And you always hear me saying that we don't want to, uh, okay, maybe I, I'm a bit more towards the natural side, okay? So that, that's my personal disposition. But we want to be balanced. We don't want to be too spiritual. We don't want to be too natural. Yeah. Very, very important. Now, it's okay if you're more spiritual. It's okay if you're more natural. But you're hybrid. You're at least able to be like, I'm very, very natural. I'm very, very good. But I can be spiritual if I need to. Yeah. You want me to minister now? I can. Say, I'm very, very spiritual, but if you want me to behave and don't speak in tongue and look straight and don't close my eyes, I can. Yeah. Right? That's our training, right? <laughs> Join equipping. So, <laughs> but it's true, right? It's true. And finally, humility. Because we understand that we are limited. But when we come together, then God can get it done. Because it's like, we, we don't say marketplace is superior. We don't say house is superior. We really recognize each person have their own portion. And you know, when we do it together, what's the greatest thing? The reward are joined. The reward are shared. So that's why some of you are not going there. It's okay. You equip the people, you send them, you teach them how to pray, you teach them how to do spiritual warfare, you teach them how to do deliverance and things like that, and they use it out there. You get a credibility, you get a portion of the reward. Okay, last slide already. So you see, we are middle already, right? middle part of pay decade. The clock for nations are clicking, ticking. Tick, 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 tick. It's moving already, right? So at the end of the day, this is a series. I really want to finish this because next week we're training, then we're first through, then we're into Alu already. And we really have to begin to think about 5785 five already because I think God wants to close the account, right? So some of the questions I, I really just want to put here for you to think. And, and we ask this question very, very often. What is the extent? What is the level of my edge? This is not easy to answer because John Maxwell said the hardest person to lead is yourself. The hardest person for you to have an objective view is yourself because you are always not objective. Some people will be like, hey, everything is fine. Huh? Everything is fine. Huh? You know, sometimes when people come and tell that person, you're not doing something well, they'll be like, oh, why, why like that? Because I felt everything is fine. Then you have the other extreme, everything is not fine. Everything is bad. So this is, requires maturity, requires deliverance, requires healing. Then you come. But I, I still want you to explore because Af and Elu is that time. This is the time for you to do it. If you don't do it, you can't go into Tishwe and head of the year with new revelation. What is the level of my potential? It's related, but it's also very different. And, and you have to be really, really honest. And sometimes... If you struggle with these two questions, I would suggest you, you, you have to get feedback from someone. And it's not easy because feedback are never nice, right? Nobody likes appraisal, right? Yeah. End of the year appraisal, there's a few years for form. I mean, there's all kinds of things. But you may need someone to talk to you. Yeah. What do I need to unlock the next level of my sphere edge? And this is also very difficult. And I, I put this to you for you to consider. Maybe you need mentoring. Maybe you need a word foundation. Maybe you just need a chat. You know, mentoring is not... You see, I've done a few mentoring before. It's all very quick one, you know. All my mentors kind of process with me like a few times and that's it, you're on your own already. Uh, because I, I'm a more introspective person. I, I need to process it myself. Um, but some of you maybe just need that kind of unlocking for a while. But some of you, you may need someone to work with you for a longer time. It's okay. Find out what you need. Who are the people who can help? Who are the people that I want to be together with? Now, these are not the same question. Who are the people that can help? It's like you see someone, you know they have the anointing, they can help you. But it doesn't mean that you want to work with them. If you see someone that is very good and you don't want to work with them, I would say you have a deliverance issue. Then you have to ask, what kind? Because it's true, you know somebody has that anointing, but I, I gram that person. I don't like the style. And you know, a, a lot of small, small things. So that's why you have to ask this question. Then, of course, finally, I really want to challenge everyone who are at the middle of half already. One more month, five, six weeks before head of the year. What do you need to do to finish off 5784? The year of open door. Have you entered the door? Have you entered and shut the door?